I was sent this laser by Ohmtech and it is a 20 watt MOPA fiber laser marking machine. I've seen these in the past. I've always wanted one. I've seen lots of videos about them online. This one's supposed to go super fast and it's a MOPA laser can mark in a various shade of colors as I understand it. This is supposed to be a really high quality and pretty compact little laser machine. I used to have one like this and it won't let me zoom in. This big square machine, it was a CO2 laser. It's kind of jank. I bought it used. The guy had already modified it a lot. I modified it more so that I could do more things with it like laser on cups. So the machine that I had was slow but super powerful. It was a K40, so it was a 40 watt laser. This one's a 20 watt laser, but it's super fast. Fiber lens comes with it. Oh, a whole bunch of stuff, wow. It's a lot of stuff that's inside the box. Well, I'm gonna do an unboxing video. I don't need him to do it for me. Let's see, 20 watt laser, 100,000 hour lifespan. Hell yeah. 0.3 millimeter cutting depth in a single pass. Interesting. I wonder how deep I could go. Hey, that's what she said. It's about a six by six working area. So it's not very big. It's pretty small. A 1,064 nanometer laser wavelength. I don't know what that means, but I'll find out. 0.1 millimeter accuracy, easy CAD 2 included. Interesting. And light burn compatible. So light burn is a software that communicates with the laser and tells it how to spit out the image, what strength the laser is gonna be, and probably on this one, like what frequency. The K40 I had was pretty much on or off. It had a little bit of in-between. It, it diminished the power enough that it wasn't like super dark and stuff, or I could go over it quickly. This is gonna be a lot more fine-tuned. Yeah, I'm super interested. I can't wait to open it up and, uh, and check it out. So let's just go ahead and do that now. All right, so this was sent to me by Ohmtech. 20 watt MOPA fiber laser over 15 kilograms says team lift. Realistically, this thing's probably probably 30 pounds. So let's go ahead and open it up. I've opened many a boxes in my day. Used to be a professional, you know. Ooh, a ruler. That's a uh, big giant 24 inch ruler measuring device. Oh. Okay, we've got a owner's manual or user manual. Whatevs. Set of glasses, laser resistant eyewear. Oh, these are stylish. Big t-shirt Billy Eilish. Oh, okay, okay. We can we can do this. Just wear these for the rest, just to protect myself. We got a bag of goodies here. So this is gonna be like USB cable. We've got Allen wrenches in here. Looks like probably covers for something. A ribbon cable, bag of goodies. A power cable. Uh, the laser mast, uh, put that down for now. I think this is still attached. This doesn't come unattached, right? Yeah, so this is the laser head. Wow, that is a lot of, holy cow. Dude, I could totally like, um, just try not to break it before you use it, Alex. All right. Uh. And the base. All about the base. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I see you. Actually, I can't see shit. Just put all this, uh, put this back for now. Here we are, laser. So I guess we can go ahead and try to put this thing together now. Doesn't look like it's gonna be difficult. I do notice that there's a key, a key on the front of this, probably while it's like to prime it or get it ready for lasering. You'd probably put a key in, turn it, and uh, yeah, so that's the magic stop button, emergency stop. Interesting that these things are still using old school uh, USB-A or USB-B cables and not a USB-C cable at this point. Although maybe it's just a rinse and repeat design and they just put different components inside to make it less powerful. These are not assembly instructions. All right, so it looks like there's four screw holes here on the base, on the top, and two screw holes here. I'm assuming it goes like this, and then the laser head goes like this. Is that right? It's probably right. Oh, this uh, table sucks. Oh, nice, wow, yeah, you don't see that. Look, all the Allen keys are on their own little, uh, little key ring here. Pretty nifty. 
Comes with a flash drive, an eight gig USB flash drive. We'll have to see what's on that. A couple screws. Uh, screw down the base. It's the first thing I, I should engrave with this. I think I might still have some old blanks. When I sold my K40, I gave the, the woman that bought it pretty much everything I had, like the laser, I had a chiller that I made from a tabletop ice maker, which was pretty fucking genius in my opinion. Okay, and this is kind of annoying. For, oh, I know what these are for then, okay. This is a weird way to put this together. It should be a, a more like a quick connect almost. I don't know. I also wonder how much this thing's actually going to be moved around after it's set up. Probably not much. Probably once you get it pretty dialed in where exactly the head sits. Because there's a lot of different mounting holes under here. These are all mounting holes. So you could really take this thing like super far forward or super far back, I guess, depending on what you're doing with it, like what you're engraving or cutting, that could come in handy. So this piece at the top of the tower here is a, uh, a hand crank. Bring it down and bring the head down or up so you can adjust it to be at the right height for what you are engraving. Oh, and there's a rotary axis button on the front. So these things, these guys are going to be like guides. So depending again on what you're cutting, you can put guides in place so that nothing moves. Whatever you're engraving on and you line it up and it'll be the same place every time, which is important when you're engraving, especially if you're doing making items to sell or my items for people to customize. Um, it's assembled. That was what took a little bit longer because I was explaining as I'm going and just trying to kind of figure it out. I mean, I was recording for 15 minutes. It's freaking put together. I've got to find instructions on it because it didn't come with any instructions. Like, what is this for? Why, why do I have a ribbon cable? Yeah, so on the back of this, we've got like a grounding cable if it's needed, your power input with a power switch, a rotary access input, a foot pedal input, like a dead man switch, I guess, would be a good name for it. And then the USB input and the cable loom of doom that goes up to the, uh, to the laser head. And then a fan. I wonder if this thing's pretty loud when it's running. So this is good to know. We're looking at, uh, that's the model number, LYF20JWS, 20 watts, and it runs on 110 only. So I can't plug this into 240. That's good to know. 600 watt power consumption. No shit, when it's running 150 by 150 millimeter uh, work environment, workspace. One to 4,000 kilohertz laser frequency. Huh, that is freaking sweet. So what should be my first laser engraved thing with my new fiber laser. What do you think? All right, so I plugged in the USB stick and uh, this is what was on it. A CAD software, really. So easy CAD. Ooh, interesting, hold on. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and pull this back out of our machine now. <laughs> because as I was looking at this, I had a virus scan pop up and said, threat found. <laughs> and when I just pulled it out of the machine, it said we couldn't fix it or something. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just leave this out of my machine. Maybe the software isn't signed or isn't recognized by Defender as a, a legitimate app and it considered it malware of some kind. Hey, future Alex here. I actually took this thumb drive and stuck it in a different machine, scanned it with malware bytes, scanned it with Defender that comes on Windows and Sentinel-1, and it's fine. It was just a false positive, I think. Uh, when I was making this video, I plugged it in the machine and got a pop-up that said it has detected something nefarious. Um, so don't worry, there's no scamming going on here with the flash drive that comes with the machine from what I can tell at least. While I have you here, I wanna look at a couple of different videos on things that can be engraved, but I gotta learn how to use it. I've never used one of these ever before. Yeah, so I guess I need to get some blanks. I need to get some metal things to engrave.
I mean, we all know what that is. It's time, it's time to turn, turn the world, world laser, laser in from black. black. That's really cool too, how it comes in the different colors like that. And something else I noticed that he has here in his video is this giant fan that's sucking out air and blowing it out a window or something. Um, I don't have that. I don't have a set up at least. I've got a set up on some crypto miners kind of drawing heat away from them. But yeah, I should probably do that, huh? Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think would be really cool to see engraved with this machine. I know all I did was take it out of a box and look at it. But now I get to learn how to use it, which means I get to turn around and show you how to use it and show you some of the cool stuff that it can engrave and do with this laser. There will also be links down in the description description or in the pinned comment on where you can pick up one of these later lasers. I've got a discount code as well. Uh, Geek will save you, I think, 5% or maybe it's 10%. If you made it this far in the video and you learned something today, hit that thumbs up button. It really helps the channel get recommended out to others. And if this is the kind of video that you like to see, consider subscribing for more like it. And uh, make sure you subscribe to see all the fun stuff that we get to do with this. And of course, thanks for watching.